This is Kay M. Weiland, and you're listening to the 90th episode of the Wordplay Podcast. I finally cleared my schedule enough to return to the list of research questions I left hanging after completing the first draft of my historical work in progress, The Deepest Breath. Most of the items on my list are minor niggling questions, everything from what were tourniquets made of during World War I, to would a bullet be able to penetrate the roof of a 1925 passenger rail car on the Uganda-Mombasa Railway? Thanks to Google, YouTube, and a couple knowledgeable and generous friends, I was able to get about a third of the way through the list this week. Except for that one afternoon when YouTube absolutely refused to load a video of an early 20th century steam engine, I've been having a lot of fun with my fact-checking. And it's definitely whetting my appetite for diving back into this story and editing that first draft. How to use dialogue to avoid lengthy info dumps. The latest post in the video series on my blog explains how Neil Stevenson's Anathem brilliantly camouflaged his info dumps as plot-progressing dialogue. You can watch the video on my blog at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-e-n-d dot blogspot dot com. New videos are posted every Wednesday. Meanwhile, enjoy this week's podcast, Most Common Mistake Series, Why Vague Writing is Weak Writing. Precision is the domain of the author. As the creator of our worlds and our characters, we don't have to wallow in the quagmire of vague details and fuzzy ideas. We can make statements of authority, because if we're not the authority in our stories, who is? Vague writing is weak writing. Take a look at the following examples. Maddock looked at the wall, which seemed to be smeared with spaghetti sauce. The bomb fell approximately 10 or 12 feet away from me. Elle was about 45 minutes late for her dentist appointment when a cop pulled her over, apparently for speeding. Mark's figures revealed that the addition to the house would take up roughly 50 square feet. Did you spot the ambiguities in these sentences? Every one of these examples contains words that unnecessarily weaken the author's intensity and certainty. Let's take another look, this time with the vague words removed. Maddock looked at the wall, which was smeared with spaghetti sauce. Unless you're using spaghetti sauce to conceal the substance's true identity, perhaps it's blood and you have a reason for delaying Maddock's realization of this fact, don't tell readers what something seemed like. Just tell them what it is. The bomb fell ten feet away from me. Does the narrating character know that the bomb is exactly ten feet away from him? Probably not. But because readers will understand that the narrator is making an educated guess, and because readers don't care whether the bomb is 10 feet away or 12 feet away, save yourself the extra words and the unnecessary dithering. Elle was 45 minutes late for her dentist appointment when a cop pulled her over for speeding. Again, it's probably not important whether Elle was 44, 45, or 46 minutes late. And it's not important to let the reader know that the narrator isn't certain the number was exactly 45. Similarly, unless there's a good reason for the narrator's having to guess why the cop pulled her over, go ahead and delete the apparently. Most of the time, readers don't care about what appeared to happen, only what did happen. Mark's figures revealed that the addition to the house would take up 50 square feet. Would the word roughly really add anything to this sentence? If the exact figure is more or less than 50 feet, and that exact figure is important to the story, go ahead and state the exact figure. If not, just round up or down to a precise number. Occasionally your story will demand vague phrasing for plot reasons, but in the instances in which ambiguities aren't necessary, save your readers from the boredom and possible confusion of the following words. Seem, approximately, about, appear, look as if, roughly, more or less, give or take, almost, nearly. If you are bold, precise, and definite in your choice of words, your readers will feel the power of your prose. Thank you for listening to the Wordplay Podcast. To read a transcript of this episode, visit me on the web at wordplay-kmyland, that's w-e-i-l-a-n-d dot blogspot dot com, and be sure to listen again next week. Mm-hmm.